بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers, sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In our last episode, we have taken the example from Surah Ibrahim of a good word and an evil word. A good word is just like a good tree, the roots of which are very deep in the land and the branches going up to the heaven. And it gives its fruit at each and every time with the permission of Allah. Unlike the evil world, which is the world of shirk, got no roots at all. It can be uprooted, taken away very easily because it is not uh, deep rooted in the land at all. So that was the example which we have taken, but uh, something which is also attached to the very same parable, that is in verse number 27, Allah Taala has said, يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء الله will establish in strength those who believe with the word that stands firm in this world and in the hereafter but Allah will leave to stray those who do wrong Allah does what he, what he wills. Now here, a promise is given or a benefit is given of that word of la ilaha illallah that Allah is going to make your feet firm in this earth and also in the hereafter. In this earth, in this land, because you have said la ilaha illallah, you got conviction of your faith, you can stand firm in the face of all troubles and all uh, problems, all difficulties. You face them and you tackle them. You don't run away from them. Why? Because you believe in the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You believe that Allah is going to help you you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with you. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes such people stand very firm with la ilaha illallah, with the message of Islam. So there is a help which is coming in this world and also in the hereafter. What does it mean in the hereafter? It means the early stages of the hereafter and the first stage of the hereafter is the grave itself. In the grave, as we know from the hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib, there is a questioning. And before we come to this questioning, let me take the hadith right from the beginning. Once the Prophet wasallam was attending a burial, and uh, when he was sitting with all the companions around, he said, that istaizu billahi min adab al qabr. Take shelter with Allah from the torture of the grave. And after that, he said, when a believer is about to leave this world and embark upon the hereafter, that is when he is about to die. At that time, what, uh, what happens? Some angels come with some handkerchiefs in their hands. They sit at a distance from this person and then the angel of death comes and then this angel of death approaches uh, the soul of that believer and he says to him, Oh good soul, come out. And then he takes the soul out from the body very easily and gently. And the example is given just like the water being poured out from a water container. In olden days, uh, even uh, we, we know that uh, uh, when there was no tap water in the houses, it used to be that a person with a leather container brings the water to each and every home. And then he pours that water in our utensils. 
So this is how, this is how it says that the soul of the believer, the soul of the believer is taken from his body very gently, just like the water dropping from the water container. And as soon as uh, the soul is taken away, the angels who are sitting at a distance, they take the soul, take it in those handkerchiefs, and they got a very good smell. And with that smell, they ascend to the heavens. Such is the good smell that whenever they pass by the heavens, all the creatures in the heaven, they ask this question, who is that soul? And the angels reply to them, so and so, the son of so and so, until the soul is presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is my servant, the believer. The believer return his soul to a place called Eliyin, the highest place. But before the soul is returned to Eliyin, return it back to its body for the questioning. This is how the body, the, the soul is restored to the body. That is the time of the questioning, which is just after the burial. Now the two angels come and they ask the person these three questions. Man Rabbuka, who is your Lord? Ma Dinuka, what is your religion? Mada Takulu, fi hadha rajul alladhi bu'isa fikum. What do you say about the person who was uh, sent to you? Meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And because that person was a believer, he has recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout his life. He has known his attributes. So this is why it would be very easy for him to say, Rabbi Allah, my Rabb is Allah. And because he has been practicing Islam, the prayer, the zakah, the fasting, the hajj, throughout his life, it would be very easy for him to say, Deeni al-Islam, my deen is Islam. And because he has known the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and he has been practicing all the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, it would be very easy for him to say that this man is my Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then they would ask him another question, Ma ilmuk, how did you come to know about all that? And he would say, Qara'atu kitab Allah. I have read the book of Allah and I have believed in the book and this is how I have, uh, I have known him. I have known Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is the questioning. And after that, as we have said, uh, there would be a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for this person, afrishulahu min al-jannah. Now his bedding is from Jannah. Open a window for him towards the Jannah, towards the, the paradise. And then a good breeze is going to blow towards him from the Jannah, from the paradise. And it would be said to him, have a nice sleep. Nam ka naumatil arus. Sleep just like a bride. That would be the situation of that person. And then, Another thing which is mentioned in this hadith that this person would see a person coming to him very, with a very good face, smiling face, very good clothes upon him. So pleasing is that man that he would ask him who you are and he would say, I am your own deeds. I am your own actions. And this person after listening to it, he would say, O oh Allah, let the day of resurrection happen so I could go back to my family, to my children. That is the example of the believer. And uh, in, in totally, in contrast, is the example of the non-believers. The Prophet ﷺ has said, when he is about to die, same things happen. Some angels sitting at a distance, angel of death, taking his soul out, saying, Come out, O wicked soul. Come 
come out of wicked soul and then they are going to take out his soul with so pain just like the iron spit which is taken from a moistured wool just think about a lot of wool which is moistured and in it is the iron spit small pieces of the spit iron spit and if these uh, small spit of uh, of iron is taken from the wool how they are going to be taken they are actually going to be taken or snatched away from that wool this is how the soul of that person would be taken and then the angels who are sitting at a distance they will take it they will wrap it in those uh, piece of cloth which with them with a very bad smell coming out of it such a bad smell that when they pass uh, upwards everybody would be saying who is that bad soul who is that bad soul and then for that soul the gates of heaven are not opened allah subhanahu wa taala would say return the soul to a place called sijin sijin is a prison the word is uh, derived from sijin that is it, uh, it means that it is just like a prison and then before it goes to that prison again the soul is restored to the body for the questioning the very same questions who is your lord what is your deen what do you say about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but because this person did not recognize allah he did not uh, practice islam he did not know our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would not be able to reply to any of these questions he would just say ha ha and no no other word at all he would not be able to say anything and when he would not be able to see, say anything then it would be said that afresu lahu min an nar make his bedding from the hell fire and then a very hot air would be blowing towards towards him from the hell fire and then he would be tortured as well and that torture he would remain in that torture to to the day of judgment or to the time allah subhanahu wa taala wanted for him to remain in that torture and that person would see a person coming to him with a very ugly face with a very bad clothes upon him and uh, he would be frightened to see him and he would say who you are and he would say i am your action i am your action and so frightened would be the man that he would say i don't want to i don't want to meet allah i mean, i don't want to see the day of resurrection may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such a bad end and with this we come to the end of this episode wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh